All right, is anybody confused yet? I I thought it was only appropriate that we threw up a uh, a very uh, very confusing uh, thumbnail, and uh, <laughs> it um they're both the same dated Lincoln sense. Uh, the coin on the left hand side on your screen, uh, the one that you know spending twenty five cents for that coin, I'd say is overpaying. To be honest with you. But boy, it sure does look good, huh, ladies and gentlemen? And then the coin on the right side that's, you know, imposed a little bit bigger, sold for $4,275. So what exactly gives? Uh, I can tell you this much. This is a very rare error coin right here. And um, if, you, uh, if you were a completist, and what I mean by that, if you were a coin roll hunter... And you actually take the time to weigh each and every single individual coin. You might be able to find one of these. It's uh, uh, because because of its date is, is what makes it particularly rare. If I'm not mistaken, the last last time a later date transitional error had sold was um, it was probably four or five years ago. I believe it was. Stax Bowers auctions and it was a 1989 and I believe that coin was also a Denver Mint. So what we have here, the two coins, we have a regular good old fashioned 1990 D BU Mint State Red. That co that coin's worth about 25 cents. Good luck getting an actual quarter for that coin, by the way, um, unless you needed one for your um, your album. More than likely, it's only worth about face value. Uh, they were minted in the, into the hundreds of millions. And um, the composition on the that particular coin, and that's the overall makeup of the, the coin itself, is a copper-coated zinc composition. Okay, this, this uh, as a lot of you do know, was changed over in 1982. As a matter of fact, 1982, we saw... A bunch of different variants. We saw small dates, large dates, D mints, P mints, you name it. But 1982 marked that line of the end of the bronze copper era. And it switched over to the crappy zincan era. And that should be it. No more bronze. But as we all know, for those of you that follow my channel, sometimes, you know, a mistake can happen. You know, a mint employee sweeping up, sweeping up the facility at the end of the night. You know, of course, there's going to be some blank planchets and other things on the floor underneath the minting presses. You know, can't really say it's a spick and span operation. You know, if it's like any other uh, good old warehouse, there's going to be dust bunnies and all that great stuff floating around. But it would not be out of the question. In 1983, the first like real date in which a copper-coated zinc planchet coin was going to be made, that a mint employee or whoever is cleaning up the floors at the U.S. Mint, and it doesn't matter what facility, more than likely the Philadelphia Mint, comes across a copper planchet blank from the previous year, and whoop, they go ahead and throw it right into the hopper. All right, and then there's a few other ways I'm sure that those things get in there. I was just, you know, kind of fa fairy tailing it a little bit so it sounds more uh, 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 believable, I suppose, you know, which it could happen, you know, just cleaning up or, you know, maybe some coins get stuck in the hopper or whatever they use to transport all of the uh, planchets from here to there, from the upsetting mill to, you know, its next step, uh, probably the uh, the presses. And um, there, there were a number of examples throughout the years that have been discovered, okay? Uh, and the best way that you could figure out if you have a copper transitional error coin on a 1983 was you simply weigh it. You know, I, you know I, I'm kind of like old school. I'll just do the ping test on, the, on a wood table and you could tell the difference between a copper bronze era planchet and the plasticky sounding copper coated zinc planchet it. Um, but yeah you would simply weigh it so the 1990d Lincoln that you see on the left side would weigh two and a half grams the copper transitional 
or a copper bronze. You can even weigh one from like the 70s or 1980, 81, whatever. And those will weigh out 3.1 grams. Now, there's a little bit of a tolerance. You know, one might weigh slightly less than 3.1. It might weigh a little bit more depending on the thickness of the planchet. Um, there are There is such a thing as overweight planchets. But this is a coin right here that sold on great collections over the weekend. Now, you guys already know how much it sold for because I put it right in the thumbnail. Uh, $4,275. And I'm going to tell you this right now. That's, that's a hefty amount of cash for what appears to be just a regular brown, some would even say it looks circulated, um, Lincoln. Now, this particular example is a Denver. It was um, graded by PCGS as a Mid-State 64 Red Brown, all right, which is pretty decent grade. And then on there, it's a struck on 3.1 gram bronze planchet. That's the important part of this. Now, this thing sold, and I think this has got to be one of the cheaper examples I've seen on record for this type of error. Uh, I believe the 1989 that sold on Stacks, I think it's Stacks, either Stacks or Legend, sold for around, it sold north of $10,000, if I'm not mistaken. A myriad of the 1983 transitionals that we've seen, I've probably seen maybe a half a dozen of them, have all sold for around eight to $10,000. I think one of them probably went above that by a small margin. But... This coin right here at $4,275, I cannot for the life of me remember if any other example had sold for less than what this one did. Because throughout the history of numismatics and error coins, the transitional error has always been one of those coins that if you're able to find one, it's like a really big deal. Not only that, you know, it, it would be a great piece to add to your collection. but also, these are incredibly valuable. As you guys figured out, thousands of dollars isn't nothing, right? I mean, that, that's a pretty good chunk of change right there. Now, the coin itself, I, I think, it, this is the strange part. The, the obverse of the coin looks to be more circulated, but that's only because it looks more brown. The reverse of the coin, in this particular instance, has, you know, a lot of mint red remaining on there, which I think... I think looks pretty neat. Um, you know, the reverse, I wish the obverse kind of matched more of what the reverse looked like. It might even grade out a full red. Um, but it got a red brown, you know. So 1990D, as far as I know, is the latest date known on record. And when I mean record, I mean through, through the auction. I'm sorry, my dog's barking outside. Uh, through auction records of a transitional 3.1 so I, I mean it's kind of hard to speculate why this one sold for amount of money it did i feel like I, when i first saw it and i was conferring with a few of my my panel q a members i kind you know i asked them how much do you think this coin sold for and the coin had already sold and some of them said like 35 grand you know 15 grand yeah the the, the money was up there five figures as, as you would expect for a coin of this magnitude to be, but $4,200 is what it ultimately ended up at. So the question now looms, is this, a, is this an error that's kind of cooling down a little bit in the marketplace? Or because this is a much later date, that it's less appealing to an error collector because it's seven years removed from the transitional period, of 1982 to 83 there's a lot of things to be said i can't really delve too deep into the psychology as to why a coin like this sold for a lot less money i mean it sold for less than half of what i think a lot of people's expectations were but i'll be honest i think the person that bought this got a screaming deal here's the actual listing on great collections all right, so in reality, it sold for $3,800, but we always have to add that buyer's premium fee in there. So that's where the $4,275 came from. Which, uh, you know, take nothing away from great collections. Uh, they're a great auction house. Uh, I, 
I seem to think that this one hadn't been on here that long. Um, usually, the, I mean, the Cricket is still on great collections. You guys know the Cricket, the PCGS Cricket from Fred Weinberg is still on there. Um, and we can actually take a look at that here in a second. But if this was only on there for like 7 days or 14 days, maybe that's just nearly, not nearly enough exposure for this coin to be on the on the website for the the sale um so this is interesting for any of you guys that are interested in finding one of these and you know searching through coin today is like hot it's a hot topic and uh, a lot of people are doing it there's more youtubers that are getting into it and there's just generally a lot of people trying to obtain bankrolls and they're just not is there's not that many people out there uh or not that many roles to be had because the bank's either a don't have them or you know it's just i don't know but this is one. this is one of those target coins that people are looking for along with some of the big marquee varieties you know the double dies and you know other various transitional die pairings and all that great stuff um but this is pretty interesting forty two hundred dollars seems cheap let me just go ahead and run down some of the other infamous transitional error coins okay and these were all sold on heritage auctions so this is great and there was quite a few of them so 1943s um you guys know that's supposed to be 43s are supposed to be the zinc coated steel planchets so this one was struck on a bronze planchet graded out 63 brown through pcgs it's also got a cac sticker this one sold um last year for five hundred and four thousand dollars a 44S, which is going back to a bronze planchet. This one was on a zinc-coated steel planchet as a mint state 66. This thing's gorgeous. Through PCGS, CAC certified, sold a month, two months ago. Uh, no, a month ago. Just over a month ago, August 18th, for $408,000. Let's see if I could find like a 1980s era, and I did. I found one here. Now, this one sold in 2014. 1983, struck on copper planchet, graded out mint state 63 red brown through PCGS. Sold for $18,800. And uh, Great Col or, uh, Heritage did indeed sell the 1989D. Um, th this is a really great example of this to, to see just the attrition. Uh, of the coins as they get a little bit older 89d struck on a pre-1983 3.1 gram copper planchet a uh, beautiful grade mid state 65 red through pcgs sold for seventy five hundred dollars now the the grade is obviously dynamite the coin is full red it's beautiful seventy five hundred dollars this is 42.75 this one's a red brown and a grade point lower Okay, so that kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. Um, oh, oh, this is interesting. Uh, this is the... Oh, here's another 1990D. Same as this one right here. It's a different coin, however. This one sold in 2018. This one was actually, the one in Heritage, is a 64 brown, not red brown, like the example that you see on screen. Sold for $5,640. So that's uh, $1,400 more than this example. And it's a full brown. As opposed to this one being a red brown. So the prices have obviously dropped. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's unreal. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the transitionals. Uh, well, there is one more. Uh, 83 this one sold August 3rd of 2020, so just over a year ago. And this one is a Mint State 61 Brown, but it's graded by NGC, and it's sold for $3,120. So, okay, well, that, that makes sense. Now, now looking at this one, I think this one's probably more on par of, of what the, the, the sale price should be. Um, if it was $5,000, I think that'd be a little bit better. Um, based off of the previous sale of the other 1990D that we uh, just talked about, 
But that's interesting. So when you guys are out looking around your change and you have this these post-1982 coins that feel a little bit heavier, why don't you give them a little bit of a way? Because, uh, yeah, they're uh, even one that's uh, in less desirable condition. I think there was even an AU example. And I think it's sold on Greek collections. It's sold for around 1000 bucks. I mean, it's uh, it's good money, that's for sure. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that, um, that cricket that's still being sold. Uh, I think it's in the error coin section. Okay. It might take me a little bit. I, I love scouring through the, um, the error section of great collections. I, I've bought a number of coins through here. And, uh, I mean, you certainly can't go wrong. Uh, they, they do a good job. That's for sure. Now, is it in errors? I don't remember. If you guys see it, let me know. Actually, you can. This is not live. <laughs> That's a really cool off-center buffalo right there. AU-55. Wow. Sometimes you come across some pretty good gems. Okay, it's not in that section. Let's go back to the main page. Because this is one of their showcase items. I'm not even calling it a coin. It's a it's a showcase item. Liberty Gold, Buffalo, Walking Libs. Because they put this thing off for like 60 days. Wow, they have some pretty nice pieces on their website right now. Well, after all the U.S. Mint stuff, I'm kind of broke right now. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I'd love to buy more gold, more old silver, and Mint State 66 this and 67 that. Man, we, we got to uh, we gotta bolster the holdings, if you know what I mean. I came across it by now. We're almost to the end of the uh, high-profile stuff. Oh, there it is. Thirty-six hundred bucks with thirty-three days remaining. Ain't that something? That's something you don't see every day. I mean, you know, whatever you want to say about it. Me think I, me personally, I think it's the dumbest, dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life as far as an auction listing. But if it has a good story and it involves PCGS grading headquarters and it involves one of the, you know, the, the well-known error specialists within the hobby, I'd say why the hell not, right? Um, $3,600. So I wonder if the buyer is going to crack that out and dip it in chocolate. You know, it becomes a delicacy. Oh, man. I can only imagine that thing is just going to blow up into, you know, insect dust. Especially if it, it gets uh, sent like uh, overnight and it's on an airplane and when it gets to like 15,000 feet in the uh, in the air, the plane, that, that thing's going to vaporize. But anyways, that's crazy. But anyways, I wanted to talk about that, that transitional penny. Um, like just letting you guys, one did sell and uh, $4,200 is a uh, good chunk of change. For sure. So yeah, yeah. Make sure you're looking out for it. Um, go get yourself a nice, inexpensive scale that that can uh, measure into the hundredths, I think. So two decimal points over. Um, that's that's going to be an integral part of any uh, coin roll hunter's arsenal. Uh, I have two two scales. One of them's broke though. I need to buy another one. I always have two on hand. I, I always manage to break one of them while I'm doing this. Or they, you know, they just peter out or something like that. But, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to go ahead and do it. Uh, there's my good old thanks for watching uh, thumbnail on screen. Um, appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for all the views and support. Um, I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my content. I'd say less than 1% of the people actually are subscribed to my channel because I have a ton of views and a ton of people that roll through. Uh, of course, hit the dislike button if you didn't like anything about today's video. 
But that's it. I wish you guys the best of luck in all of your hunts. Uh, we do have a pocket change mark report that's going to be drizzopping, dropping uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so we got the midweek edition of the PCMR. Always a lot of fun. Let's see what sells and what, what happens. Let's see. That's it, guys. Coinholics, we're discovering together each and every single day. And uh, that's going to go ahead and do it. So thank you guys again. Have a wonderful evening. And I'll see you on the next coin video. Take care.